Welcome to another episode of Tips from the Top. My name is Rick Barron and today I am thrilled to have the opportunity to interview Andrew DeWitt. Andrew is the founder and CEO of Dewey's Pizza. Thank you, Andrew, for joining me today. Glad to be here. Andrew, you grew Dewey's Pizza from a single restaurant in 1998 to 20 restaurants in five locations. What was the vision for Dewey's Pizza that you originally had in 1998? Uh, very different than it is now, absolutely, you know, yeah? for sure. Um, you know, it's funny, the, um, I had this idea for this restaurant, and at the time, not that I got a ton of encouragement, uh, it was, you know, pizza was, pizza was pretty saturated in Cincinnati. Um, I'd got this idea, I'd lived out in Seattle, for a while and worked at a pizza place and said, you know what, I'm going to do do this pizza place. So I had this vision basically for one restaurant. And I recognized at the time, um, like, you know, many people know even today, it's difficult to open a restaurant that, that doesn't lose money, that doesn't close within a year or something. So, um, um, yeah, it, it was, uh, um, the vision was to, I, had, I knew how to make pretty good pizza. So mm -hmm. it was to come up with some really uh, good recipes and um, uh, like I said, I worked at a place out in Seattle. And um, um, so, yeah, I just, I just wanted to, wanted to kind of had that entrepreneurial drive to do it. And um, the goal was really just one restaurant. Okay. Um, I know thinking about now with 20, it's like, oh my God, uh, th there must've been some master plan, some genius idea. <laughs> um, but it was really, it was, um, I knew if one was successful, perhaps there would be an opportunity for another one. Um, but really, it was just the one, this idea for one restaurant. Um, and like I said, I worked at this a pizza place out in Seattle and uh, befriended a manager. And we sat around thinking, you know, if we owned this this pizza place, we wouldn't do it this way. We would do it, uh, you know, okay. uh, another way. And that was kind of the, that was really the impetus. Okay. So Why, was there something specific about the Cincinnati market that brought you back or you just decided to come home? Well, I grew, so I grew up in Cincinnati, uh, born and raised, um, went to Summit um, through eighth grade, went to Seven Hills, actually where my kids are now. Um, and then went to a boarding school. So um, it is interesting, really, the story of Dewey's is really sort of the story of my life. Um, and I was into... Um, into music and I went to Denison University and after college I decided to uh, kind of pursue music ended up out in um, Los Angeles for a year and then moved up to Seattle which is where I learned um, uh, got a job at a pizza place while I was up there doing the music thing so yeah what, what was um, I jumped all why, the place why back to Cincinnati yeah, why back to Cincinnati so um, well, Cincinnati's got a great sucking sound um, <laughs> for people who grow up here and pretend like they want to leave and do great things, and then somehow uh, they end up coming back, and, and that, that was the case for me for sure. Um, a lot of great friends here, and uh, it's really a great town. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I've got a family now, so it's a wonderful place to raise a family. And um, really, the timing for me was the music thing. I, you know, I, I was not, uh, did not make it to lead guitar of Pearl Jam. <laughs> so, um, and I was getting, you know, slightly older. I was uh, 27 when Dewey started. So I was there kind of in my early 20s, early to mid 20s out in Seattle um, in the um, what am I going to do with my life kind of stage. And I was, I had this passion for music and that really was not going to be a, a profitable, uh, sustainable way of living for me. Uh, my father had been a successful um, uh, entrepreneur, well, not necessarily entrepreneur, but um, uh, a finance guy, right? He's an mm -hmm. investment banker. And um, so he had always, you know, he'd been encouraging me to, um, you know, perhaps get on the business track. And um, so, yeah, interestingly, the last year I was there, I worked at a pizza place. And my girlfriend at the time was um, very skeptical that I would survive <laughs> working for minimum wage at a pizza place for um, an extended period of time. But that's exactly what happened. And immediately I fell in love with the, um, you know, the high, high paced nature of a restaurant. I'd never worked in one before really. And uh, I just loved it. And, and immediately uh, the manager and I became friends. He recognized a work ethic that just sort of came out of me. I mean, it was, um, it was interesting. Just, you know, the, the tickets come up on the, you know, to tell you what kind of pizza to make and it's fast paced. And so it was back in the day when Ken Griffey Jr. was playing for the Mariners. They were in the playoffs, and you know, right before a playoff game, it was a delivery store. The tickets would be the ground. 
you're like, oh my God, we got to make all these pizzas, right? And it was just, I, I just really enjoyed um, that challenge, that high, high, uh, high energy atmosphere and pressure. Um, and yeah, I just gravitated towards it. So, you know, it was, it was, you know, listening to great music in the background and working with, you know, friends. Um, and it was, you know, do that a handful of times. And I got hooked. And then, you know, after work, hang out, you know, have a beer mm -hmm. with a, a friend or two. And ultimately, again, with the manager saying, you know, if we were to run a place like this, we would do it this way and that way. And, and really, the light bulb kind of went off on, hey, maybe I will take little pieces of uh, restaurants and pubs and bars that I like and come up with this, this idea what, what, what uh, ended up being Dewey's. So one, one restaurant in 1998. Yep. Then there was a second, then a third. Before you know it, there's a dozen. Yep. Then you're pushing two dozen. At some point in time, the vision grew bigger. Absolutely. Do you know when that was? When the vision said, you know what? I could blow this thing out and we could do this all over the Midwest. Yeah, you know, um, that's a good question. Um, the, the, there were lessons, tons of lessons early on, as inter, any entrepreneur you know, will tell you. Um, and for me, the, you know, people say, oh my God, how'd you delegate? How'd you do this, that, and the other? And I, I was fortunate enough to have gotten early success with the restaurant. So I, I, you know, I'll never forget sort of the, the early story was we opened up and it was gonna be a soft opening for sure. Um, you know, no advertising, wasn't really in the budget. Um, had to get our feet wet kind of making the pizza. And um, so we opened up and, um, you know, business was okay. It was a bit slow. The plan actually, you know, the original vision was to deliver. So the first store I worked in was a delivery store. So the vision I had originally for Dewey's was, hey, let's, let's I knew how to make delivery, you know, pizza. And I knew I could make it fast enough or the, and build an infrastructure so that it would support delivery. My idea was to really um, try this pub concept up front um, or, you know, almost like a Zips or an Arthur's up front, which is what I thought kind mm -hmm. of it was going to be at the time, uh, with this infrastructure in the back that could, that could do delivery. And um, so that was the plan. And after two months, it might have been three months we were open, to go, okay, guys, the restaurant isn't super busy. We've gotten our feet wet. Let's get ready now to do, uh, do delivery. And I get a call from Polly Campbell, who does the, um, uh, she's the food critic for the Inquirer, mm. still doing it. And she called me on a, I want to say a Wednesday and said, uh, oh, Andrew, you know, want to learn about the restaurant a little bit. I'm Polly Campbell with the Inquirer. I answered a bunch of questions, kind of like where we are right now. Mm. And I said, okay, well, you know, great. So um, when are you going to come in and, and check it out? And she's like, well, I've already come in. The review's written, and it's coming out this Friday. That's why I'm, you know, wow. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so I hope we were good, right? You know, so I backtracked a little bit. And, um, and so that was Wednesday. I told the staff, hey, a review's going to be coming out on Friday. My day to um, kind of sleep in was that because uh, it was going to be working night. And I get a call at, you know, 12 o'clock. Andrew, oh my God, it's a disaster. You have to come in. The restaurant was totally full. We had, we had one server um, working. So we were totally unprepared. So I walked in. For the place. home run For review. For the home run review. It was a great yeah. review. Uh, and I walked in and I'll never forget walking up. You know, somebody, you know, grabbed me. There were four tables unbust. You know, people were just, you know, our one server was running. The one manager, a couple of people in the kitchen were just, you know, they looked, they, they were shell shocked. You know, a uh, a uh, patron came to me and said, are you, are you Mr. DeWitt? I said, yes. He's like, you know, good pizza, but you need to get your act together on this, you know. <laughs> and, you know, from that point on, uh, it was business basically tripled. So we wow. were doing about $25,000 a month. That next month, we did $75,000. Wow. Hopefully not too many early experiences where, um, you know, people were sitting for a long time without getting food. Mm -hmm. And so that set us back on our delivery plans. Um, so... Um, you know, call it six months down the road, seven months down the road, that, you know, sales kept going up and up and up. And, um, and ultimately, we decided to uh, not do delivery. So, really? Uh, and, and interestingly, you know, I, know, I don't know if we'd be getting to a different question or not. My first hire um, was a friend of a friend who had worked at um, Trio. And Trio at the time, and still is, quite frankly, known for, uh, you know, it's a wonderful restaurant, independent mm -hmm. restaurant. And they were very focused on service systems. And uh, this first hire, Joe Schlotman, came along. And I said, Joe, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the pizzas in the back. I've never served. I've never run a restaurant up front. But I know I can make pizza fast enough. 
uh, why don't you go ahead and run the service aspect up front? And really, the, the randomness of that hire, had he been a pizza guy, had he been less focused on service, um, we may have ended up delivering. And he was very, um, uh, you know, disciplined and had a, had, a, had a very strong vision for what, you know, service ought to be. And uh, in many ways, honing that, while we got busier and busier, the challenge kept, um, it kept being more and more of a challenge. How do we keep being great and great as we get busier and busier? And uh, ultimately, that really led to the culture, which is where we are today, really around, um, you know, it's funny, I opened up a pizza place, and now I'm running really a restaurant company that happens yes. to serve pizza. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Andrew, little change of gears. Okay. You had alluded to it earlier. I mean, baseball really is your family business. Grandfather, father, how do you break away from a legacy like that? To go run away to California to play lead guitar and then ultimately end up as an entrepreneur running a restaurant that happens to serve pizza. Right. Well, you may have to ask my uh, therapist about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I do. You know, it's funny. I'm, I'm one of four children. I was the third child. Always had an entrepreneurial streak in me. And as a kid, I remember my, you know, my father, my father was an um, uh, investment banker, so he bought and sold businesses. And I don't know, uh, you know, look, you could do studies on father-son relationships. Um, it was, uh, for some reason, it, the, the idea of buying and selling businesses at the time for me growing up was didn't seem, um, I was more of a hands-on guy. And, and, you know, if you buy and sell businesses and stay sort of a higher level, I've, I've come to appreciate, you know, you know what, what that does and what mm -hmm. finance does for, for uh, companies and society and everything. But, but for me, I always had sort of this niche of wanting to get my, my hands dirty, as it were. Um, and, and really, so my grandfather was in baseball, um, and ended up getting out of baseball really uh, from an ownership standpoint in the late 60s. And my father didn't pick up getting back into baseball operationally until 1996. Okay. So I was born in 1970 and um, in, in uh, 1996 I was, you know, you know, 25, 26 years old. Um, and I still had, I suppose, a little bit of a chip on my shoulder wanting to, and, I, and again, that's why he was joking, you know, he asked the family therapist there, um, I don't know what it is about being a third child or the way my makeup is, but um, I always felt like I had something to prove on my own. And, and realistically, while I was offered um, uh, an ability to go, say, work for, for the, the Cardinals um, in baseball, um, it was um, something that I just felt like I, um, uh, perhaps I knew that it was there and, you know, did not want to re regret not doing something on my own, at least. I understand um, that. So, so really, that's that's um, that's how I did it. And, and you know, here I am sitting in front of you, getting you know mm -hmm. interviewed, and and uh, it's really been an, an incredible um, an incredible run, and one that I did not necessarily foresee happening. Right. So, I mean, a lot of the advice I give to people, you know, from entrepreneurship is. Uh, standpoint is take the risk you know I'm a perfect example of had I not taken that risk I'm not sitting here today right yeah. now it could have failed as well um, but I do believe that that um, and while I could be say working for the Cardinals had, had Dewey's not worked uh, I do think you know if you don't take that uh, take that path you never you know you're you know I didn't you want never to be know you never know right and I didn't want to uh, necessarily have to live uh, live um, uh, not knowing one way or another whether, whether I could have done it. If you just joined us, you're watching Tips from the Top. I'm Rick Barron, and I'm interviewing my guest today, Andrew DeWitt, who is the founder and CEO of Dewey's Pizza. Andrew, what do you wish that you'd known 20 years ago that you know today? Oh, that's a good one. Um, you know, I joke all the time, sort of the friends like, well, I wouldn't have opened Dewey's, I would have just bought Apple stock. <laughs> right. So, you know, um, I, you know, I'm one of those guys that while I, you know, fantasize about, you know, winning the lottery and all these things, and in many ways I have in life, I, you know, I really try not to look back and say, what if, because a lot of times for me, it's about, you know, again, oh, should have just bought Apple stock, this, that, and the other. And um, to me, the joy of life is, is the unknown. 
and the ability to uh, control our own destinies. Mm -hmm. So um, really the lesson of looking back to me is, um, okay, well, I was alive and breathing and conscious, it, yet I didn't make, I didn't buy the right lottery ticket. I didn't buy Apple stock, right? So that lesson is, okay, we're sitting here today, right? What can we do today? I'm sure 10 years from now, you'd be like, Rick, oh my God, if only we would have done this, <laughs> that, and the other, right? You know, we'd have three houses and, you know, one in the Bahamas and one here and there, right? So, um, yet that opportunity is in front of us. It is. Right? We don't have that knowledge, right? We don't have that yeah. crystal ball. So, um, yeah, so I tend not to uh, think too much about what I would have known. It's, uh, you know, because you can spend, you know, a long time thinking about it. You can mm -hmm. beat yourself up for making the wrong decisions. Um, and I think for me, it's, it's learning really one of the great, uh, um, you know, as a hands-on guy, uh, it's learning. I think one of the things that we've done well at Dewey's is learning from our mistakes. We will continue to make mistakes, um, and we recognize that. So it, it's being as clear as we can, certainly with the leadership group right now, around purposely and being purposeful around our decisions and getting agreement and building consensus. And if that decision's wrong, then, you know, hey, we all got in the same room and thought this was the right plan. It didn't work out. Time to move well, on. let's lament about it and look back and say, geez, if only, boy, it's like, no, 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 let's just learn from it and let's move on, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, so really that's been one of the, one of the, uh, one thing that I think we've done well as an organization. And, and thankfully we haven't made, uh, that one critical mistake that's taken the entire organization down. So mm -hmm. we've avoided that, you know, that one as well, which can happen. Absolutely. If you think about the principles that you l use to lead your organization, mm -hmm. I mean, there are certain values that are core to those leadership beliefs. Yeah, that's a, it's a, uh, that's a deep question. And we could use up probably the rest of the time talking about those ones. Um, um, I think for me, I guess the thing that I've realized as a leader, and really it, it's funny, I, I, here I am as the CEO of Dewey's, right? I, I never had this vision of, oh my God, I want to be CEO, right? It was, I want to open a restaurant, I don't want to lose money, I want to have a cool place, and I had this vision of what I thought it could be. I'd never even thought about, you know, leadership and, you know, you know personnel development, individual development, leadership development. So all of this stuff, um, really became a necessity, uh, as you were alluding to before, you know, my God, the first store worked, we got a second store and well, what do we do? How do we hire? And then a third store. And, and it was like, oh my gosh, you know, we had to react to our success. Um, so a lot of the leadership lessons, again, it was, it, it, it's been a, sort of a, a master's class in leadership lessons for me, really running mm -hmm. a, running a restaurant, uh, business. So I, I think, um, I, I think one of the most important things I, I would say, um, I think I, I'm open-minded. I've learned that uh, subsequently after, um, you know, we, we have a, an HR consultant that we use and do, uh, you know, psychological profiling for, for the key management so we can communicate better. So um, recognizing that I'm open-minded uh, or realizing that. And I think, um, <coughs> you, know, uh, you know, honesty sounds kind of um, cliche. Um, but um, I, I, maybe transparency. Mm. I think I'm a big, uh, or I know I am a big believer in transparency. Um, and all, maybe almost to a fault on some levels. Um, and you know, you think about vision right now with the company, it's really exciting looking forward. I feel like I've got more of a responsibility now than I did you know, to all of our employees than I did when I first opened up the first store. The first store was friends and family investment. Everybody knew, wide, you know, eyes wide open, hey, there's a lot of pizza, Dewey could lose all of our money and, and okay, right? Now that we've got 20 stores, people have moved to different markets, there's definitely a responsibility to uh, the employee base that, that I feel uh, more so beyond myself, right? So, um, How big is that organization now? 20 stores, all the leadership. Yeah, the so, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, we have a lot of employees now, right? So in I the restaurant so. business, as you can imagine, there's, there's pretty high turnover. Um, we try to control that, obviously, but, um, you know, it's the nature of our business. So, I, you know, 
anywhere from 700 to maybe close to a thousand depending on oh. their seasonality so yeah. um, a lot of those are part-timers as well so um, yeah and, and as you have more than one store right I was I was at the first store and really when I think about it probably the first four stores I think um, I was there actually physically needed for the opening so I was needed in the kitchen to actually toss pizza now I go for openings and I you know do kind of an opening speech and um, uh, let people know who I am um, so uh, you know but at the time I was definitely still involved hands-on making pizza mm -hmm. um, and yeah and like I said that so it's it, it seems to me our organization um, is a learning organization and recognizes oh my gosh you know we, we look forward to what might be and then we, we try to build the internal resources around um, uh, being able to support to support where we're going. So again, I, you know, the question was, what are the leadership tenets? I, I think, um, you know, it, it's hard for me to sort of put a word on it necessarily, you know, like a Jack Welch or somebody, you know, who's a style and, um, you know, for me, I suppose it's still entrepreneurial it, as a guy who started it. Um, uh, and, um, and it's a learning organization. So we're, I think we're adaptive. Um, you know, try to keep, you know keep learning and use mm -hmm. best practices. So um, I suppose that's the that would be the the style. Okay. You've got four kids. Mm -hmm. What kind of lessons are you teaching them about leadership? Um, geez, I, I I joke with uh, I joked with my wife. Right, you know, it's amazing childbirth, baby comes out. You're there and you have all this help and then all of a sudden you put them in the pumpkin seat and drive them home. There are no instructions, right? <laughs> and uh, so it's like, oh my gosh, really? We're doing this now? We're parents? Um, you know, all four of my kids are different. And um, I, for me, what I am trying to do as a parent is to um, have them recognize uh, their strengths and their weaknesses, right? What they can and can't do. Some are very good at sports. Uh, some are good at math. Others struggle with reading. You know, so um, recognizing that um, uh, you know to learn about themselves. I'm a I'm a big believer in sort of knowledge of self. And really, my le getting back to the leadership style as well for Dewey's. I mean, I can't do everything, so I've hired around my weaknesses. Still try to recognize what they are. Still work on them. Um, and um, for me, it is um, you know, not to get too philosophical, but it's life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Right? A lot of people can get on the treadmill or the the hamster wheel and do the grind, do the grind, and live up to other people's uh, expectations of what they think they ought to be themselves. And I think happiness, the pursuit of happiness, um, it's not easy. And um, uh, so, yeah, so for me, it is really around understanding what their passions are, helping them develop um, ideas of what, what their passions are. And, and I would love to foster um, them to be entrepreneurs and some of them may not be entrepreneurs right mm -hmm. so i need to accept that as somebody who is an entrepreneur say yes go do it go <laughs> do it and some of them may not have that that desire as they get older so uh just to, to support them uh kind of for the people that they are so um it's fun it, it's neat i must say it's the i'm the cool dad a lot of times right going into to school i'm actually doing one uh probably in the next few weeks at, at seven hills uh for my sec second grader and i get to go in there and while i'm sure not to throw attorneys under the bus, but the attorney dad can go in and, you know, whatever it is, and all of a sudden Dewey comes in, and I bring bringing dough and a pizza stone and, you know, tossing the pizza, and the class is going crazy, and the whole school smells like pizza. Uh, it's neat. It, That's it's, fun. I know they're, they're, yeah. they're proud of kind of what Dewey's is, and, and they've grown up with it. It's very interesting. I, you know, the first Dewey's started before I had a family, so it's neat to see their friends, and I forget sometimes, you know, that, that, you know, I'm getting older. We've been around for 16, almost 17 years. And that's, a, you know, it's almost, we're getting to be like almost a generation. So it's, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of the circle of life, I suppose. But it's neat to see their friends who've known nothing, um, haven't seen a world without Dewey's because they've grown up with it, yeah. right? So, yeah, uh, um, yeah it's kind of cool. You have 
served in a number of leadership capacities for nonprofits here locally. Have you seen any differences between how you run Dewey's and how most nonprofits are run? Or are the skills very similar? Yeah, um, you know, it's been tremendously helpful for me to have, um, I suppose, learned what I've learned through the process of growing Dewey's. Uh, to bring that to the nonprofit boards. Um, I'm still learning, however. Um, obviously, and, and Brent was the one who introduced us, mm -hmm. right, to, to do this show, um, who I admire immensely. And, and I was on the search committee as well to hire Brent for the Boys and Girls Clubs. And um, I, I, I must say, I, I think being an executive director or a president or whatever the title may be for a nonprofit could be one of the hardest leadership jobs that you could have. Way harder, I think, than being a CEO. Uh, of a company, um, and uh, and the reason I say that is, um, well, you know, while while some big companies will have you know board of directors and and all of that, which I really don't know that much about. I, th again, this is in my experience. You know, local nonprofits many times are underfunded um, and have active boards, um, a lot of different personalities. Everybody on the board really wants to help. Um, and yet it takes a very strong leader to recognize how to say no gently to, to certain agendas um, on boards and um, takes very much a knowledge of self to recognize how to interact with all the different board personalities, um, to be strong enough to, to develop their own team um, beneath them and to, you know, again, it's, it's you got pressures from below running an organization as the president, but then you also have, um, you know, if a board's 30 people, in some ways you've got 30 bosses. Many of them are the biggest uh, um, givers of time, talent, and treasure. And um, so that, to me, that um, that's the big, the big difference. So as somebody, you know, I, I feel like, uh, and I, I learned a ton on the Boys and Girls Club board, uh, Art Museum board as well, um, um, you know, I feel like I've, uh, I, I bring a, uh, a pretty good perspective from what I've done to a board and at the same time I'm open-minded. So I, I love learning from other people as well. And transparency, as I, as I told you earlier, around Dewey's is something that I um, aspire for and, and really believe in. As you, the more transparent you get on in the nonprofit sector, the more time it takes to communicate, and uh, which is a, which is a big challenge. So, um, uh, but I, I've enjoyed my time immensely on both of those boards, and really learned the Boys and Girls Clubs was, was the first time I was in a leadership capacity, and um, yeah, I, I really, I mean, it was not without uh, its challenges, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like I've learned learned a lot about myself as well um, um, in that regard. Thank you. You've been watching Tips from the Top, where we've been interviewing Andrew DeWitt, the founder and CEO of Dewey's Pizza. Thank you for joining us.